If you're a video shooter, you know exactly how important really steady footage is. We can use gimbals and nowadays we've got things like electronic image stabilization to really help with our shots. The new Sony a7S III has IBIS as well as active electronic image stabilization. And now we've got something similar in the new Sony a7C. What this does is record the gyro data. It doesn't use it as an active stabilization, but we can go ahead and post and stabilize our footage. Now, this is good and bad in some ways, and that's what we're gonna look at today to figure out if this gyro data is actually any good or not. Let's get started. Welcome back guys, and yes, today we are checking out our Sony a7C, which if you don't know what this is, this is essentially a little mini a7 III, just kind of tailored to video. Now it does have IBIS, but it's not as good as the a7 III. We will kind of go over and show you some comparisons between the IBIS on, the IBIS off, and versus the a7 III, and that sounds weird, but in order to use the gyro stabilization, you actually have to have IBIS off which is a little bit weird, and this does not have active image stabilization electronically like the Sony a7S III. So I thought we'd just go in and show you the differences of a few clips that I've taken to see if it's actually worth going into Sony's actual Catalyst software uh, out of your workflow to actually go ahead and stabilize this, then bring it all back in, what that looks like, and see if it's any different than just maybe throwing on a warp stabilizer. Let's check it out. Okay, so here we are in Catalyst Browse, Sony's free and very easy to use program. It's pretty straightforward and I'm not gonna do a full tutorial today. I'm just gonna focus on the content, but if that is something that you'd wanna see, let me know and I'll put it together for you. All you need to do is really import your clip here, click on stabilize, and then we can see in real time the difference that we're making in our cropping ratio and our stabilization. We can see that as we we actually stabilize, we're gonna reduce our resolution, of course, um, and that's just one of the trade-offs of this uh, type of stabilization. But let's go ahead and show you just what this, uh, what we're doing here and what it looks like with no IBIS turned on right out of camera. The A7C, and, and this as you can see here, it's, 16 it's not great. IBIS it's off. just not even really usable footage, so if you ask me. this is without me. the uh, um, catalyst stabilization. And over here, we can actually, in real time, show you exactly what that's, uh, what that's doing. So let's drop it down to uh, 90%, a 10% crop, and look at the difference. Quite a dramatic difference, and you can kind of play around with that actually in real time and see the difference that it makes. And obviously we don't really want a 30% crop, um, but you really don't actually need that much to make it look Sand decent. Held. So even in 10%, 15% or so, you can kind of see, and it's not perfect. There are some kind of weird artifacts and whatnot. It, it all really depends on um, the footage. And so when we're using the, stabilization uh, normally stabilization. or warp stabilizer, you're you're really using it with stable footage to begin with. So this is definitely pushing the limits of this software and this program. But as you can see here, um, 20, 15, 10% does a great job without a too much of a sacrifice to your resolution here. So it's really that simple. And we can even click down here and show um, the before and after Handled. in real time. And so that's kind of neat. You can see exactly what it's doing. And wow, what a difference. So pretty cool Here's stuff, IBIS uh, pretty um, dramatic so as you can see the, with uh, not a heck of a lot of work. But the downside of this program, the biggest thing for me is the exporting of it. Now, it actually took the exact same footage. This is about a 30, 45 second clip or something like that. And I exported it and it will actually optimize your image quality and whatnot, not doing a heck of a lot, just taking that stabilization and activating it through your gyro data. This clip took about 25 minutes, which for me is really not feasible. That is an incredibly long amount of time for such a small clip. And although, again, it might be a pretty decent result, Peter's that's a long time. And for so me, I don't think that I'd actually sacrifice that much time um, for this effect. I might try a different route. But now let's jump in and compare it to say the warp stabilizer in Premiere Pro and that's kind of been my go-to up to this point. Let's uh, let's see the differences in that regard. And here we are in Premiere Pro and what I'm gonna do is just use my old warp stabilizer on the exact same clip and let's compare the difference. So this process also takes a little bit of time 
it has to analyze each and every frame and uh, decide what's going to be best for it. So luckily you only have to do it once and then you can make the alterations from there. But this time it took about six minutes, which is a lot better than 25. But how does it look in comparison? Well, let's have a look. And right off the bat, you can notice some wavy weirdness happening here. And that's generally because it starts off at about 50% smoothness. I don't know why it's set so high. I like to use just a few percent. Let's set it to five and see what that looks like. So for me, that's definitely a lot better than 50. And you definitely get kind of a natural look to it. Uh, right off the bat, looking at it, it might not be as good as the gyro data, but it's definitely a lot faster and uh, more convenient. Let's have a look at them side by side. So let me know down in the comments which one you are leaning towards, which one you think is worth it, and if you notice a huge difference between the two. And uh, here they are side by side, and just for fun, let's throw in the A7C with IBIS turned on. Just to show you the difference between post stabilization and in-body image stabilization. And as promised, here's the difference with IBIS turned on on both the A7C and the A7 III. Here's another extreme example of me pushing this to the limit. And as you can see here, there's an 85% crop ratio and it does a pretty darn good job if you ask me. It's definitely not perfect, like I said, it's not designed to do this much erratic behavior. The moral of the story here is to get it right in camera. And I can't stress that enough, whether it's photos or videos, it's just great practice to be as good as you possibly can in the moment and not have to rely on, well, post-production. And here's one last example, something probably a bit more realistic, something that you're gonna be dealing with on a regular basis, just handheld footage, B-roll, that type of thing. And here's with no IBIS and no gyro data, and here it is after the Catalyst Browse. You can see about a 15% crop once again, but it's just got such more of a fluid, beautiful motion to it. So yeah, it does do a pretty good job and it's a great tool for if you really need it. So there you have it guys. There is what's capable with the gyro data in the A7C. Pretty cool look into the future. And again, it's disappointing we didn't see some kind of active stabilization like the Sony A7S 3 but of course at the price point, they didn't want to cannibalize it and I get it. It would have been nice to see just a little bit more out of this camera, but again, a really neat option, especially if you have an incredible computer or the time. And if I were to stabilize every single clip of this entire video, it would have taken my entire life. So do consider that, although it's a great kind of option to have if you really, really need it. The warp stabilizer is what I've been using for the last few years and all of my content and everything that I do. And uh, people don't really seem to mind. So let me know your thoughts on the two of them down below. If you are ready to pick up either one of these cameras, I will leave affiliate links down below for you. It's much appreciated and it helps out the channel. And uh, guys, like always, make mistakes, be yourself and get out there and take some more pictures. See you in the next one.